Check Podcasts. Hi, I'm Bruce Williams. Welcome to Chamber Chats. I'm the CEO of the Greater Victoria Chamber of Commerce. And we're coming to you, as always, from the podcasting studios here at the Czech Media Group, one of our chamber champions. I would like to acknowledge, as always, that I live and work in the ancestral territory and waters of the Lekwungen speaking nations known to us as the Songhees and Esquimalt nations. And Chamber Chats is made possible by the support of Island Savings, a division of First West Credit Union, who have a team of professionals with solutions as unique as your business. We're going to talk today about things in the construction sector, whether it be residential, retail, commercial, whatever it might be. Not only the, the actual structure, but the design plans that go along with that, with a couple of really interesting people. <laughs> so these two people are winners of Chamber Business Awards in the last year, and we're going to get a background on both of them. First of all, Ann Squires Ferguson is the CEO of Western Design Build. She is a member of our, our Chamber Board, and you, Ann, were the member of the year last year for the Chamber. Congratulations and welcome to Chamber Chats. Thank you so much. I was indeed, and what an honor that is. And the business person of the year last year was our other guest, Dave Stevens. He is the principal and president at Lita Construction. Dave, how are you today? I'm fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So something that we talk about sometimes is the path that has led people to where they are right now. For example, I was a kid who grew up in a small town, family operated a bakery. I went to school to be a teacher. I ended up in broadcasting. Now I run a chamber of commerce. Ann Squires Ferguson, your career path has been fascinating. Tell me about that. Well, thanks for that intro. I was actually on CBC yesterday being interviewed for unconventional career paths. So oh, oddly really? enough, we, <laughs> aren't we all smart UVIC, then? <laughs> UVIC's chamber, uh, UVIC's uh, job jam is this coming weekend and really encouraging young people to take chances and, and take advantage of interesting opportunities as they arise. Great. So I joined the military very young at 18 and uh, I uh, went to school for electromechanical engineering, uh, specialized in shipboard weapons. And after I had served out my commitment to the military, I took a position at an audio engineering company here in town, designing high-end karaoke machines for the Asian market. And, wow. uh, and then <laughs> made the leap, um, wanted something that was technical and creative and discovered through a number of uh, interesting uh, adventures discovered interior design. So practiced uh, interior design as it's a standalone career for 10 years and then partnered in at Western and I've since taken over uh, and Western of course is design build uh, on the commercial side. So we design and build hotels, restaurants, office buildings, clinics, you name it. Cool. We're going to talk more about that in a second. And Dave, this is not your first career. You had 30 years doing something else. Tell me about that. Yeah, thank you. Um, I was a police officer for, for 30 years. Started out working actually as a prison guard uh, for four years. And then I went to Winnipeg PD for seven years. And then I came to the island uh, and worked with Saanich for 20 years as a police officer. So uh, it was an awesome career. I loved it. And uh, anyone who serves, I got a lot of time and a lot of respect in all capacities. I now have two. My twins are both in the army right now, so it, uh, it runs in the family. Well, thanks to you for your service and thanks to your kids for their service as well. Tell me about the leap that were you a guy that was always like doing home repairs and that stuff? Is that what led you into this? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I wouldn't say I was a guy that was always doing the home repairs. I think what happened was uh, we have three boys and they were all playing very competitive hockey and lacrosse. And uh, as you already indicated, I was a police officer and my wife was a 911 dispatcher. And it was extremely expensive uh, to, to put our kids through sports. So, so we started building and renovating, building and renovating, building and renovating, then building a new, a new house and then selling it. And we just kind of kept going through that whole process. And then eventually our kids went off to college and junior hockey and turned to my wife one day and I said, I'm going to start a business. And she goes, what kind of business are you going to start? And I said, well, I'm going to start a construction company. And she's like, well, they don't know anything about construction. And I said, <laughs> Well, okay, that's fair. And then she said, even worse, you don't even know anything about business. And I said, well, that's true too. So we'll figure it out <laughs> as we go. <laughs> and you figured it out well, and you've both built companies that have amazing culture and respect for employees, and you're innovative and you're creative as well. So I don't want to dwell on what has happened over the period of the pandemic, but there certainly has been some transformation and some disruption. And tell me about the, the process of your business going through the period of pandemic, where you were and where you're at. 
So at the start of the pandemic, we were actually uh, two separate teams. So I ended up purchasing a retail and residential business that I had on my own. And then we had a smaller commercial team, two separate studios. Um, we were eligible for the wage grant. Uh, and so we actually took that and rolled it into a benefit for the community and gave away blocks of time uh, for businesses all over the city. Over 25 uh, businesses we were able to serve pro bono uh, with that wage subsidy to help them uh, pivot. And so partitions in restaurants, uh, pathways in optometric clinics, you name it, it really was a wonderful way to serve the community and to keep my staff busy and engaged because there's nothing worse than sitting at home and miring, right? Getting stuck in your own thought patterns. And so I thought if we're actually out there and serving the community, it's going to be a much more um, valuable uh, experience. And by the time we worked through that wage subsidy, we uh, had projects that were restarting. So our work was very different. We were lonely, certainly working from home, but uh, we were able to continue and fortunately didn't lose a single employee through the process. I also mentioned too that in that period of time, you beat cancer. So congratulations. And we're very thankful Thank for you. that. And I just want to go on record as saying, I'm in favor of those plexiglass things between tables and restaurants. <laughs> I kind of, I don't need to know what they're talking about next door. I really don't. <laughs> uh, Dave, tell me about Lita 2019 versus now. What's, what has gone on th uh, through that process and what's changed? Yeah, I guess I don't know if I can, uh, you know, make it any better than what Ann just said. Now I know why she's the chamber member of the year. That's pretty <laughs> impressive, Ann. Well done. Uh, you know, for us, uh, it was just an opportunity to expand leader construction into more of a group of companies. So um, we transitioned to more of a vertically integrated company. So we added a capital company. Uh, we enhanced our development company and we enhanced our holding company. So we just created a, a, a vertically integrated company and spent a ton of time focusing on our team and our culture and, and, and working around how can we make the leader group of companies a company that is very desirable for the construction community, the development community around culture and uh, you know satisfaction of actually feeling like you're having a meaningful impact in someone else's life. So we spent a ton of time around culture and team and we measure measure that data, uh, have been measuring that data and we do, we do quarterly conversations every quarter and we just recently got our scores for uh, company culture out of 10 is 9.25 rating across the board, which is really uh, amazing for us, at least anyways. And then job satisfaction is 9.17 out of 10. So for me, though, you know, those are, you know, really high numbers and we're really happy that our, our team has transitioned into a team that really just loves to work together and care about what they're doing. Yeah, it's really palpable in both of your companies that there is that culture of, of togetherness and working together and helping each other and supporting each other, which is something we all should do more of whenever we can, that's for sure. Okay, so we're talking about building stuff. We're going to get right down and do some building next. Our guests on Chamber Chats today, we're talking about construction and design and things with the buildings that are being created. Our guests today are Ann Squires Ferguson, CEO of Western Design Build, member of our Chamber Board, our Chamber Member of the Year at the Business Awards, and also a member of our IDEA Committee, which is Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, Advancement Committee. And Dave Stevens was the Business Person of the Year last year for our Business Awards. He is the President and Principal at Lita Construction. And tell me how your company works with companies like Dave's. What's that dynamic? So we have a number of different services that we offer, design, design build, and construction only. Uh, and on the residential side, we are design only. So we would work with a client to do custom home design or design their renovation, kitchens and bathrooms. Often there's extensions, pieces like that. Uh, and certainly custom homes. So anything uh, that's shiny and new, uh, often they come with a really beautiful site. So sometimes those are oceanfront or lakefront um, or set in a serene wilderness. And all those are projects that we would bring a company like Lita in uh, to pick up on the build. Okay, so this is a question I have for both of you, but Dave, I'm gonna start with you. Um, with all due respect, the sector sometimes has people who mistrust or question the integrity of people that are in building and renovations and they're afraid they're gonna get, you know, frauded or something like that. What, are the, what do you need to ask someone before you do business with them? What are the questions you need to ask a builder or a contractor or a renovation company? 
You know, I mean, I'll get to that, but I guess the first thing, you know, I, I think that at least this is what we tell our clients is, is trust your gut, like, like spend some time with the people you're going to be working with, get to know them, are, you know, do they have, are they a person of good character? Do you feel like you can trust them? Uh, you know, are they family orientated? Not that being family orientated is everything, but having the character that you care about other people matters. Um, and do they live their personal core values? And does that translate through uh, their companies? Because if they don't know who they are and they're just flopping all over the place all the time, there's a good chance that their business is probably flopping around all, all over all the time. So, um, you know, that would be kind of the first thing. The second thing is ensure that you do a solid background uh, check. Um, you know, people often just call someone and then there's all of a sudden the contractor smooth talking guy shows up and, and they're hiring somebody and writing, cutting a check and without even signing a contract and the money's out the door. And that's a lot of where our bad reputation comes from, I think. So make sure you do a background check, slow the process down. Uh, and third, like go and look at some of the job site jobs that that, that this contractor has done. Uh, preferably some active, call some references, and and just do your due diligence. Because um, uh, if you don't, uh, you, you know you might run into you know that smooth talk and cut me a check and I'll be back, and they never come back, and that's always a real dangerous place to place to be. Yeah, no kidding. And what about you? What what's what advice would you offer for somebody who's undertaking a project? I think Dave's response is really comprehensive. Um, the one thing that I would add to it is uh, ask your friends and neighbors, ask your family. And uh, that's true for the commercial side as well as the residential side. Western, we don't advertise at all. Uh, all of our work is referral, word of mouth and repeat clients. Uh, and it has been a solid string for us um, for 33 years because we do great work for people and care for them as human beings. And then they tell uh, their friends and family about it. And the people who love them watch them go through that process. And so the vast majority of entrepreneurs I know are friends with other entrepreneurs. The same can be said for restaurateurs or hoteliers. And so uh, that's the vast majority of our work comes from referral. One of the disruptions that happened during the pandemic, of course, Anne, I'll stay with you for this, was the fact that we suddenly had a supply chain issue because things weren't being done at the production side, the manufacturing side, that supply chain of getting materials here drove the costs up and drove the prices up. Worker shortages were and are still a factor. Where's that at now when you see things happening every day, Anne? I think worker shortages is still a real factor for us. And what we're finding is a project that might have taken four months uh, to do a TI or tenant improvement uh, will now take five or six because the teams are smaller. Um, and the teams are smaller because there's simply not that workforce here on the island. Uh, it's really expensive to live here, as we know. So, so that's a, one of those repercussions. The other is that, unfortunately, some of the smaller companies, the smaller handcrafted products, um, weren't able to stay solvent. And so, you know, there's some really beautiful handmade tiles or hand bloomed textiles that are no longer available that they had to shift to another uh, profession. Yeah. So, Dave, things are back to better than what they were during the pandemic. But what are you seeing? Uh, worker shortages, supply chain, all that stuff. Yeah, you know, I think everyone's aware that it is somewhat improved. Uh, you know, I, I still though believe we're suffering from uh, the COVID hangover, the supply chain hangover, which is trans, you know, transitioned into this instability around our industry, around reliability and character and doing what you say you're going to do. Um, and we spend a ton of time with our team building culture and around core values, which is very much aligned with those things. But it's now trying to get our trade partners uh, on the same page around, you know, you've made a commitment that you're going to be somewhere at a certain time and you can't make it because life got in the way. That's understandable. But how about a little bit of respect and a phone call and a conversation saying, hey, you know, I had challenge with my kids or I got into a car accident or something. We just seem to have lost that uh, respect that, you know, everyone has a busy schedule and we all rely on each other to do certain things, pieces of our own puzzle. And when they don't get done, it, the whole system breaks down. So, 
you know, I don't know. I just refer to it as the supply chain hangover and the COVID hangover and that combined those two issues, uh, you know, we're still recovering from. And, you know, I, 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 I hope <laughs> it's getting going to get better because uh, it's stressful, you know, uh, for a person uh, probably much like Anne and me who, you know, really pride ourselves on doing what we say we're going to do. And we rely heavily on our trades and our team sometimes to mostly trade partners to do what they say they're going to do. And when that doesn't happen, it uh, causes us both a lot of turmoil. There is a universe of television programs about home renovations, home building, home design, <laughs> entire networks devoted to that. Love it or list it. Are you going to renovate or are you going to build? What are you going to do? We're going to talk about that next. Chamber Chats today is all about building and construction and renovations of homes. Our guests today are uh, Ann Squires Ferguson, CEO of Western Design Build, and Dave Stevens, who is the president and principal at Lita Construction. Okay, so Ann, somebody comes to you and says, so what, should I, should I blow out a room? Should I add a room? Should I renovate or should I just start all over and build from the beginning? Where do you start that conversation? Well, for us, it really depends. Is that a residential or commercial project? Um, the vast majority of our work is actually in the commercial sector. So maybe I'll tackle that one and uh, leave the residential answer to Dave. Um, from our perspective, uh, if the business is already operating, what we're trying to do is preserve cash flow, minimize downtime. And so we use something we call the leapfrog approach, which is what is it about your restaurant, for instance, that is not performing for you? What is uh, increasing your staff time to get uh, plates to the tables, for instance. And so we take that problem and we fix it and we leapfrog it ahead. Uh, and we do that with the you know worst three things or the worst six things. And we turn that around. Sometimes you know we're working with a local establishment, very iconic local uh, bar, and we're gonna have a downtime in the new year of about two weeks. How much can we tackle in two weeks? And surprisingly a lot. And so uh, that's a really our approach is to preserve the value of what exists and uh, reuse what we can. We're always coming, every project has a sustainability component for us, regardless of whether or not it's a directive from the client. That's a huge part of what good design is. And, uh, and then we're really focused on, we're very much in the trenches with our clients. We're really focused on maintaining their cash flow and, uh, and doing everything we can to ensure that they stay stable in the market. Yeah, and that whole distancing thing was a factor in restaurants and businesses too. So Dave, everybody's suddenly working from home more. They need more space. They get tired of their house. They're sick and tired of looking at the same four walls. Their kids are living at home longer because they can't afford to live on their own. So when somebody comes to you, in a residential project to say, do I just start all over again and build or should I renovate? What's that conversation like? Yeah, you know, and ironically, that's a conversation we have all the time uh, because there is a lot of residential product out in the greater Victoria area and the island for that matter that is in really, really rough shape. So either someone's just bought it or someone's gotten to a stage where they just can't deal with it anymore. So they come to us and they ask that very question. And I think the starting point it is because everybody has this. Not it doesn't matter if it's a five million dollar build or a ten million dollar build or a two hundred fifty thousand dollar rental. Everybody has a budget, so it comes down to like what is a reasonable budget that's gonna that's healthy for you, that's not gonna overstress you, that's gonna you know try to get you at least close to what this vision that you have in relation to your living. Uh, requirements and is going to create a healthy, happy, happy environment for you and your family. So that's kind of the starting point. Um, you know, it, it, if, if the house is completely dilapidated, you know, the obvious answer nine times out of 10 is like, you got to knock this thing over and start again. Um, Cause that does happen. A house only has so many years in it before it needs, it needs replacement. But it always starts with the budget. And then it, then it, from there, it goes into, okay, what's your wish list? What's your dream? What's going to make your happy, uh, your family happy? And it's going to make you comfortable. And, uh, you know, of course, what is it that you want versus, you know, what I want? I'd love to build you a new house, but <laughs> that's maybe not necessarily what you need. Um, and, you know, then it's, then it's the kitchens, the bathrooms, the obvious areas of, of the home that, you know, really make a difference in people's lives. 
Housing supply is an issue right now. We know that. We need more housing. However, at the same time, interest rates have soared, which means that if a project didn't have financing in place before the rates went up, those projects are stalled. So now much of the residential building, Dave, I'm going to stick with you, is being done by government. What's that going to mean to the whole dynamic of creating housing? Well, the reality is, as much as the government would love to think that uh, that they can do this, they can't. It's impossible for the government to fix this problem. They need the development community, they need the construction community. That's kind of where this, you know, the long and short of this supply uh, issue is 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 there. So until, uh, you know, and this is not just the greater Victoria area, this is a North American issue. Until we can get our local governments to, to understand that housing is, should be a fundamental right of everybody. And it, it doesn't matter if you're, uh, you know, on the low, lower end of that, on, on, on say Pandora, for lack of a better word, or all the way up to, you know, the high end of one ocean front on Oak Bay. It's a fundamental right. And h- housing supply, no matter where you build in that uh, continuum of housing, impacts every single person because it's a ladder effect up and down the supply chain. And I'll go to you for this one to wrap us up today. Uh, we have the pleasure of operating within 13 municipalities, all of which have a different permitting process. How can that be best navigated? Well, this is the same answer that I give a lot of questions. And uh, the answer is relationships, that we maintain really tight relationships and very responsive with all of the municipalities that we work in here. uh, These 13, as well as Cowichan Valley, as well as Courtney Comox, Gold River, Powell River, uh, up and down the island, uh, we're working in Port Hardy as well. And the answer is always relationships, is uh, to be really responsive, to ask the municipalities what they care about, what their priorities are, what they need to see in order to have a project move through smoothly. Uh, and if we come asking those questions rather than telling, we find that uh, the process is much smoother. Ann Squires Ferguson, Western Design Build, and Dave Stevens, Lead of Construction, both recipients of Chamber Business Awards this year. If you go to the Chamber website, victoriachamber.ca, click on events, you can go and watch the videos that describe more of what these two do. Thank you both for being here today. We appreciate your time and your knowledge. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You bet. I'm Bruce Williams. We'll see you again for another Chamber Chat. <laughs>